As many of you already know, I run a consulting company called Surface, which is a proud Asana partner. We specialize in a variety of Asana services, including training and workflow optimization. Whether you're in the process of introducing your team to Asana because you're transitioning over from another tool, or you're already using Asana but feel like you're not quite getting the most of its potential, we're here to help bridge that gap. Our training is tailored to fit your team's size, workflows, and skill levels so that you can get the most out of your Asana investment. Head over to surface.com for more information or book a connect call using the link in the description. In this video, I'm going to walk you through Asana's new customized onboarding feature. And unless you are a super admin in your space, you likely wouldn't have known about this setting. And so again, you will need access to the admin console. When you do click on the admin console, you're going to first go to settings and then you're going to scroll down until you see customized onboarding. And at this point, you'll be asked to turn on the feature. And so you get a bit of a preview here of what it will look like. Like. So we're going to turn it on first, and then we're going to go in and actually start customizing our onboarding experience for our new hires. So when we click on edit, you'll see there are a few options here. The first is an option to allow guest users to also go through this workflow. Now, in many cases, a guest user may be a contractor coming on for one specific project, or maybe a customer coming on to work with you collaboratively and your team within the Asana space. And so depending on your, your use case, you may want your customer or your contractors to get a customized experience. Maybe you would be helping them get onboarded to the Asana platform and understand how you'll work together in that space. And so that's one use case where if you did include guests, you could use that functionality. In this case, I'm going to exclude guests because I'm going to be using an onboarding template that we already use inside of our Surface environment. And now you have the option to select the languages as well. So depending on where you're located, geographically, you'll have the option to update the language preferences. When you go to the simplified account setup, you'll notice that there is a lock here. And so this is a required part of the onboarding and to customize the experience for the new user, they will be asked to put in their full name here. And so we can't currently make any changes to this screen, but we can make additional changes after the fact. And so if we want to add a custom welcome screen, you'll see as a default is welcome to Asana for Surface. At Surface, we're using Asana to grow our culture of collaboration. And so we can actually update this message, which is really nice. So if we wanted to change the title, we could simply say welcome to surface. And then I could put in a custom message here. I'm actually going to leave the default because I think it's pretty good. But then you have the option to also change the, the logo. I think I have to restart my Chrome because it's not actually letting me upload the logo. But in any case, you could add your company logo right here instead of the Asana logo. And then we can also add some branding. So I'm going to add in just our branding there. And so I'm adding in our surface yellow. Great. So it looks good so far. Now we're going to add a custom screen. And now in this section, you'll basically be able to determine where the new hire or the person you're onboarding starts out. Will they start out at their home page where they'll be um, seeing the widgets for the first time? And again, if they're not used to Asana, maybe that's not the experience we want them to have. There's also a default team page that you can assign them to, and there's an option to configure that. But in this case, again, because we already have an onboarding template, I'm going to choose a specific onboarding project. And now we'll be able to go in and select the default team. Now in our surface space, any team members that come in, we add them to a team called the learning commons. And what the learning commons has is our break room our digital break room that has everything about surface. We have our team directory in there and we have uh, some other things in there that would um, help the new hire onboard faster and based on the tasks in their onboarding checklist they would need access to the projects within this team to complete their onboarding so we selected our team and then we're going to select our specific onboarding project now again you'll have to have a template already created for this and we do it's in our human resources team and then the project template we're going to select here is our new hire onboarding checklist now here's where you can add some further customization in this case you can choose to personalize with the username and if you just know right up here when I'm clicking this checkbox on or off it adds a username variable now with our template I'd already created the new hire name and in the past we would have had to have done this all manually after the fact so I'm actually going to change the project name and I'm going to call this onboarding checklist I'm going to put a space hyphen and then I'm going to choose to personalize and then you'll see when on the welcome screen they put in their their username that is what is going to populate right here so we can actually then go and preview what the experience will look like okay 
And so let's see if I can, it's not gonna let me put anything in there because we're in preview mode, but again, we're just gonna go continue. You can choose to do this or not. I'm just gonna skip through some of these because they're not important at the moment, but then we get to our welcome screen. So whatever that needs to look like, whatever message you want your, your new hire or your new person coming in to actually see, this is what you would have here. They would then continue. And then where they entered in their full name, you would then see their name right here. And so again, they're on the learning commons team, they're on the human resources team, and already it's starred their onboarding checklist for them. And then we're going to click done and then save these features. Now you get a nice overview of all the different steps right here. And then the next time that a new employer, a new team member is onboarded, they will see receive this new experience. So hope this was helpful. If you weren't aware of this, this feature yet, please speak to one of your super admins to initiate this option inside of your admin console. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.